Hello and welcome back to Small Room Audio. Today we are looking at a Bluetooth lifestyle speaker. Now, I know you hardcore audiophiles out there probably aren't that interested in lifestyle speakers, but hold on because it's going to be quite fun anyway. And actually, this does look quite funky and cool. And let me tell you a story before we start because every week I get a lot of emails from companies saying, would you like to review this or would you like to review that? And to be honest, most of the time it's not from Kef offering me an LS60 and it's not anyone particularly huge. Sometimes they're well-known manufacturers and of course I'm all over those, but most of the time I get emails from Chinese companies who are doing the odd amplifier, DAC or indeed Bluetooth speaker. And in the main, most of those, when I check them out on the internet and look at their websites, are going to go, eh, maybe they're the next den of frips or, or maybe not. And frankly, I'm not too interested in reviewing lots of unknown stuff from China, not because China doesn't make some great stuff, because it does, but I need to be inspired and excited to uh, review something because this isn't my job. I do this as a hobby. It's all about fun and sharing my experiences with all of you. And when Rob Young or Ruby Young, I think it might be Rob Young, the people who uh, created this speaker reached out to me, I was kind of slightly cynical. I thought, oh, here's another Chinese Bluetooth speaker. Shall I bother? But when I looked at the website, when I looked at the product, I thought, well, let's give it a go because it looks quite cool and quite funky. And so it arrived. Here it is. And you'll probably agree with me. It does actually look quite funky. It's a Bluetooth speaker wrapped in leather with a nice handle. It's got a good sort of six or seven kilogram weight to it. And uh, yeah, that initial impression was very good. And actually the packaging in which it came in was almost Apple or Sonos uh, style packaging. Lots of different um, elements to it very high quality, very nicely packaged, so far so good. So got it out and I thought, well, yeah, I'm gonna review this and I'm pleased to introduce you to it today. This is the 630 Bluetooth speaker, but not just Bluetooth and we'll show you that in a moment. In the front here, we have a number of uh, switches. You've got your uh, sort of, what should I call this? Sort of style of music switch, if you like. This tells you whether you want it in ambient mode, or you want it in hi-fi mode, or you want it in outdoor mode. I think it's outdoor mode, isn't it? Yes. So this changes the profile of the sound coming out of the Bluetooth speaker to uh, give you a different presentation. Uh, my advice to any budding audiophiles or anyone that just likes nice music, don't really bother with outdoor or ambient, just stick with hi-fi, because what outdoor does, is it gives a huge V-curve shape and gives you far too much treble uh, and some dirty bass. And then you've got ambient, which is nice, and I guess is exactly what it says in the tin, because it gives you an ambient sound, but really hi-fi is where you want to keep it, because that is the best all-round sound for this speaker. Sound profile we'll talk about in a minute, but that's where I would definitely leave that switch. You have a pairing button here for Bluetooth. You also have auxiliary, because you've got auxiliary slot down the back and a three and a half uh, millimeter jack. You've got Bluetooth, of course, that's going to be the most uh, common connection for this speaker. And you've got optical because it's pretty good. You do have an optical connection around the back. So if you've got a CD player or something like that, or some sort of streamer, you can put it into this, which is very helpful. We also have a power button here and we have the volume knob at the end. Around the back, if we swap it around, you'll see what I've just spoken about, which is at the back here. We've got an on and off switch. The power cord goes in there. We've got uh, analog out, auxiliary in, and optical here. So that's quite good for a Bluetooth speaker in terms of giving you options. Back around to the front, we have got a uh, quite a nice grill here, but we're gonna take it off. We've got different designs. On the website, you can choose different designs, and this is definitely what caught my attention because they're really funky designs from kind of modern art or fashion, um, and also they do bespoke ones as well. So we pull off the grill, see what's contained underneath, and we've got a pretty simple setup here with two tweeters in two corners and two uh, four-inch woofers here, which are fairly long throw for base. And this is kind of made of, you know, solid, solid sort of material, it's, it's sturdy, which is nice. In audio products, you kind of look for that. And the piece de la resistance, as it were, for this product is that you can have different covers on the front. 
So with your, your tweeters and your woofers, you can hide them if you'd like with different covers, and they do bespoke ones as well, which is what really excited me because I created a bespoke cover. Also in quite nice um, packaging here, you know, you've got the Velcro at the front, you open it up. Again, like I said, it's all packaged really well, so the quality there is very high. I got a bespoke cover for this of my little Dachshund, Shumi. There we go, we'll put that on the front. I'll probably have to look at it actually to do it. But I thought this was very cool. The fact you can get bespoke covers made for your speaker, blooming marvellous and looks very cool. So there we go, there's Shumi looking out into the distance. We also tested them with their printing ability because this is kind of a slightly sepia black and white photo and they did a pretty good job of it. I thought the printing there was excellent. And if you want to get your baby, your husband, your lover or your brother, whatever you want on the front, you can get it put on. And I think that's really cool. However, this is an audio pro product and this is an audio channel. So as much as I love the looks, and I really do love the looks, I think it's really cool and quirky, we've got to talk about the sound. And as I've said before, if you leave it in hi-fi, that's the best place to be. It's most flat. I wouldn't really worry about outdoor and ambient. What is the sound profile of the hi-fi output? Well, the main word I would use is clean, clear maybe as well. So it's quite articulate. It's not super exciting. It's not like a, my Sonos Play 5 where you get tons of bass and it can go super, super loud. No, this, this one is best at medium volume or below. And the reason being is we start to reach some of the limitations of this speaker as we pump up the volume. Because this needs to be caveated, okay? Those big woofers in the front there, they can pump out quite a decent amount of bass, but too much volume and it all starts to distort a little bit. So much so that when you're at three quarters volume, this little sort of panel at the back here starts to vibrate a bit. And that's not a good look or sound. So you have to treat this speaker with a slight kid gloves. It does go plenty loud enough to fill a room, but it isn't really one to really pump out the noise. It won't go as loud as a Sonos. Also, as a Bluetooth speaker, it's not giving you multi-room. Yes, you've got the um, optical input and you've got the auxiliary in, and that's great. And a Play 5 has an auxiliary in, but you don't get Bluetooth multi-room functionality here. It is fairly straightforward. And the sound you get compared to, say, a Sonos Play 5, which I do think is the, the most obvious competitor to this, and it's what I also own as a Bluetooth speaker, um, I think it doesn't give you as much party sound, but perhaps it's a little bit more articulate in the sort of upper mids and the treble than the Play 5, albeit you can play around with the um, treble settings and the bass settings in your Play 5 in the Sonos app. So you can make that speaker sound more like this one if you did like this one. So, you know, comparing the two, this cost, and this is really random on the website, £633.33, pence, which I think is just a direct translation from the dollar price, but that's what it is on the website, versus the Sonos Play 5, which is £499. Is this worth the extra money? It doesn't have multi-room. It doesn't go as loud. The bass can distort towards the, the higher end of volume. So the answer initially, purely on Sonics, would be no. I would choose the Sonos Play 5 over this because of the added functionality and the loudness and just the ease of resale as well. However, there is a market for this speaker and I believe that's for the slightly trendier of us, those more hipster types, those who are a bit cooler because this is cooler than a Sonos Play 5. It sounds good enough to be pretty much in any room. And if I was running a small independent business, I would be putting some sort of branded front on the back there and put it in my cafe or restaurant and be very happy with that indeed. This is a speaker that you buy partly for the Sonics because they are good, but more than that, you buy it for the look and the bespoke personality of it. This is a personality product. And do you know what? They've done pretty well with it. I would not say this is necessarily an audiophile grade product, and it probably for me is overpriced by about £100. If this was at the same price as the Sonos at £499, you're definitely getting something that's worth it. It might be slightly high for some. However, bear in mind, the extra money you can pay for on these, which I think is £40, is definitely pretty cool in my book. Now, I don't think there's much more to say other than if you're in the market, 
for something with personality, a little bit of eccentricity, a lot of personal sort of branding on the front or you know putting your, your particular spin on things, definitely consider this because this is not a rubbish Chinese hi-fi product. This is something which I think is built to a decent standard. There are some caveats, you can't go too loud. Also, when you turn it on, you've got to be mindful that um, you know, you've got the right settings in play, that you're not going to ambient or to outdoor. And then I think you're in business and you can quite enjoy taking this round with you. It is pretty stylish and pretty cool. I think that's pretty much it. So if you do like this video, please do like and subscribe and we'll see you back here very soon.